Good morning, everyone. It's almost the end of 2021, and I wanted to talk about resolutions and goals. For 2021, I had several goals that I made, but most of them were over long-term goals. Most of them were like a five-year five plan. Uh, making a, a yearly goal is usually something that uh, small things that I do or don't follow up on, follow through on, I mean. So uh, for me, it's been more about doing long-term goals. My long-term goals were to pay off all my consumer debt, save up a significant amount of money, quit my job. So in 2021, I uh, paid off all my consumer debt. I still have a mortgage. I saved, had been over the this is stuff that had been happening over the last five years. I uh, had been saving uh, significant amounts of cash, and I had a specific goal in mind. And when I hit that cash goal, I decided to quit my job. Now, when I quit my job, my, my ultimate goal for 2021 was to retire, like forever, and get a part-time job to fill in the blanks, you know, that kind of thing. So when I quit my job, I had my um, monetary goals established uh, and I started doing some hobbies that I had, didn't have time for before. I got to see friends and family that I hadn't seen in a while. I got to do go to some events that I had never been to. I started painting and behind me are a few examples of some of my paintings. I've even sold some of my paintings, which it, to me is miraculous because, you know, it's just a hobby. And anyway, uh, but uh, my mind started turning to mush really quickly. Plus, I have the problem with health insurance. I could have gotten uh, health insurance through the marketplace uh, without, if I was not working at all. Because with no actual income coming in uh, the marketplace, you get your insurance pretty much for free because of subsidies. But I did want to go back to work part time. And so whenever I decided to go back to work part-time, I found out that the insurance was going to be pretty expensive. Um, and the other thing about it is I live in Florida, and this insurance, if you get it on the marketplace, subsidies are good, but the insurance choices are not so good. The deductibles are really high, like six to $8,000, and the co-pays are all over the place, and that is for coverage that you would not pay for. Now, if you wanted to pay for coverage, uh, you could get it at a higher premium and have no deductible and no co-pays and all that, but then you would be paying five to $600 a month or more for that insurance, even if, even if you had no income of any kind. Um, and at least that was my experience. Now, whenever I started working part-time, I was not sure about what hours I was going to be working. So I did kind of a, an average of what I would be making for the year because this is what the healthcare, uh, online medical healthcare uh, thing goes by is your income. And I found out that uh, depending on your income, it goes up more and more and more. And if you don't estimate your annual income correctly, at the end of the year, they penalize you and you have to pay all that back. So I decided not to get the insurance at all. Now, when I was working part-time, I did it strictly to see if I liked the job because I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to have to pay a whole lot for insurance, then I'm probably going to have to work full-time, you know, in reality, that is, either, or go without insurance. So if I found a job that I was kind of so-so, I would take my chances and not have insurance at all. But I really loved the job. I did it for three months and then I opted to go full time. When I went full time, my insurance uh, was automatic when I signed up for it, very, very inexpensive. And I only worked one more day over the week. I was working two days a week part time and three days a week full time because I worked longer hours during those days. So when that happened, uh, I was able to uh, look over all of my uh, goals and everything and see how that would change for the upcoming year. Because 
with all those things changing, my goals for the next five years would be completely different. My goals for the past five years were to pay off my debt, save up money, quit my job, then get a part-time job and do my hobbies and interests and that kind of thing. So for the next five years, my goals have changed because of this work status. I work full-time, I get more money, and I have health care, so I don't have to worry about trying to find ways to pay for that. Um, so what I've decided in the next five years, my loose goals are to pay off my mortgage and save up cash again because what I did with all the cash that I had saved up to this point is I put it towards my mortgage in order to lower uh, the total amount. Uh, I did a refinance last year, but then after I did the refinance, after I got the full-time job, I put that big chunk of cash to my mortgage. And some people would say invest it. Some people would say just hang on to the cash. Uh, but for me, if I hang on to cash, I have a tendency to want to spend it. And when I, that feeling started creeping up on me, I'm like, no, I can't do this. So I just sent it to the mortgage. It was a significant amount of cash. I still have an emergency fund that would, that would take care of me for six to eight months, probably a year if I was really tight. And um, so for 2022, my goals are to pay heavily on my mortgage and attempt to pay it off within the next five years. A couple of other goals I had is to add more money to my savings again so that in five years, within the five years where I pay off my mortgage, I'll have a substantial amount of cash so that when I, uh, so that I'll have money to do some remodeling because it, within the next five years, my house will be over 10 years old. And for a lot of people, that's like, that's no big deal. But at the 10 year mark, sometimes appliances start going bad. Sometimes you want to do a few updates. I'm not really, I don't really like remodeling. It's, it's a big, huge pain in, the, pain in the butt. But reality is, is there's some things that will be need repairing. Appliances will need to be replaced. So um, those are my goals for the next uh, year, five year goal. The other things that I've thought about doing uh, for 2022 is what's called a no-spend year. And I'm not talking about not spending any money at all. I'm talking about not spending money on things that are not necessary. I'm going to not spend any money on my hair as far as getting haircuts. Uh, I did get my hair cut uh, twice this year. Uh, the previous years, I didn't get my hair cut for five years. So it probably won't be hard for me to do that. No manicures, no pedicures. I haven't done that anyway. Uh, buying no purses, no uh, shoes that are not for work, buying no clothes that aren't necessary for work or if something wears out, replacing it, that kind of thing. Uh, buying gifts for people. I have plenty of paintings. If I need to give somebody a gift, I'll just give them a painting. Um, and there's, there's a lot of things on the list that can, that can go in either category, like glasses. I usually buy a new pair of glasses every two or three years. Now that I've got good insurance, I'll probably be getting a new pair uh, in the next couple of months because my vision has been changing a lot. Uh, ultimately, at some point, I want to have some kind of surgery to fix my vision because I have some crazy vision issues and I don't know that um, as time goes on, my glasses get... Um, the prescription gets stronger and stronger, and it's not just reading, it's uh, the whole thing. I have had surgery before, but it would probably be necessary again. And um, as far as my art goes, I've spent quite a bit of money this year on my art, and I have a, a lot of supplies, so I'm hoping to use up the supplies that I have and make a decision at that point whether I will continue it. Um, I haven't made any money on it. I've sold a few pieces and I, you know, I enjoy making it, but it is kind of stacking up. I've got, uh, I've got it almost everywhere, you know, in little stacks. So I really need to think about how, if I'm going to continue or not with that. And if not, I'll just take what I've got and put it up on my walls and I'll be good. Um, I haven't gotten into any other real, uh, Hot, any other hobbies really um, there's a few things that I'm doing but it's not really um, considered hobbies I do a little book club with some friends and um, my sister has moved in with me until she retires 
So we spend quite a bit of time uh, together. She's going to be moving to Georgia when she retires next year with her husband. So uh, until then, things here are kind of in flux. Uh, I've had a couple of my animals pass away, and that has put me into another mindset of possibly, you know, not having any animals at all. What am I going to do? You know, do I want to travel more? Uh, things like that, because little things that happen in your life, it, it really, you don't really think about how it affects you, but uh, when you have pets, you feel kind of uh, grounded where you are. Um, certain kinds of pets. I don't have a dog or a cat. Um, so my pets are more uh, the kind that you have to stay home for. I had a rabbit and he passed a few weeks ago. I have four parakeets, or had four parakeets, and one of them passed. Uh, about a week after the rabbit passed. And so thinking about those kind of things, uh, you know, I'd always thought, you know, I'd be here and my animals are here. It's harder to get somebody to take care of uh, rabbits and birds. I don't know why, but it is. And so it's made me really think about what my options are going forward if, if something were to happen to the rest of my birds. Um, I like the house that I'm in. It was not meant to be my forever home. But now that uh, inflation has hit the home market, uh, pretty sure it will be my forever home uh, unless I just sell everything and just travel, which is an option too. I always keep all my options open, but I still want to pay it off. Um, my original plan when I bought this house was to live in it for uh, about 10 years and then sell it and buy something uh, more suited, more customized, I guess you could say. I had bought some land and I was going to put a house on that land, it was something smaller, um, something not really traditional and more, um, more eco-friendly, I guess you could say, you know, have some solar and have a garden and that kind of thing. But when everything started skyrocketing and I, I saw the, how, how it was going to go and plus uh, things at work were getting crazy, and I really wanted to get out of debt, and I owed money on the land, plus to build something on there or even clear the land. It was going to be quite expensive. Plus, they have impact fees here for new homes, and then on top of that, then uh, building a home is skyrocketed. So I put that that goal to rest. I, there was no There was no reason to go forward with that. So, uh, my whole point to all this is that my goals uh, five years ago, I, I accomplished most of them, and my goals in the next five years, I hope to accomplish, but they probably will change as they have changed over the last few years. And things happen that you don't uh, realize are going to happen, you don't expect. People in your life pass away, pets pass away, uh, other people change their plans, things like that, and you really have to be kind of flexible. But the biggest thing for me about making the goals is I had to write them down, and I had to get detailed. First, you, I wrote them down, you know, the basic thing, pay off my consumer debts. Well, that's a very vague term. So what do you do when you pay off your consumer debts? Well, you have to make a budget. You have to list them all out, which ones are the easiest to pay off, that kind of thing. And I've got some other videos that cover that, but if anybody wants details on that, I can make another video about it that's more updated, I guess. Um, the other goals was saving uh, cash to quit my job. I set a specific goal, a specific dollar amount, which is pretty high, um, pretty high goal. And my goal was to save as much as I could towards that. And then when I hit that goal, quit my job. And that's what I did. Because I had to have enough money uh, to pay my basic bills. That means my mortgage, my electricity, my water, gas for my car, internet, phone, food, that kind of thing. I had to have enough money saved in order to pay all those basic bills for at least three years. That was my goal, at least three years. And I had that. It would be living really tight. Um, having said that though, I was counting on having free 
uh, health care. And, you know, that goal had to change because that didn't work. So unexpected things happen. You know, in the next year, the, my air conditioner could go out or my car could blow up or something. And then I'm, you know, I'm having to do something over again. It's not written in stone. But for me, this is the things that have happened. This is how it's going. Uh, I hope I haven't rambled too much. But let me, tell me what you think about this and things that you've done to um, set your goals and what you plan to do for 2022 or beyond that. Uh, I'd really be interested. Uh, my channel is primarily about what I do and what I've done and a, a, a record for me to go back and watch and say, hey, I made that goal. What happened? You know, why did I forget about it? What do I need to do to improve? And because I'm all about improving anywhere I can. So until next time, Happy New Year and enjoy your day. Thank you.